This episode is brought to you by Saycon, which is on my list of apps with the most potential for game-changing savings. Talk to your organization's mobility manager and they'll tell you the nightmare of managing multiple carriers per country, each with their own offerings, contracts, and integrations. Saycon abstracts and manages this for you, eliminating the swivel chair mobility management work and giving you asset and configuration data you can trust. Saycon is mobility managed. Check the description below. Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Robert Fedoric. It is so good to have you here. I am experimenting with a new format tonight. I am starting a new series called Go With The Flow, where I am going to be building on Flow Designer and I'm doing it kind of live. The point here is for me to save on edits and just get you content faster. So bear with me because this is the first time I'm just talking into the camera and not relying on edits. I will not rely on edits. I will not rely on edits. I will not rely on edits. Okay, so here's the scenario. And excuse me, because I'm not going to be looking at the camera all the time because I'm going to look at my screen to remind myself of what I need to be talking about. Okay, so the scenario is that we are living in a world where we have incidents and the incidents are managed by deploying various incident tasks. So here we have a case where, where Able Tutor is saying his access to application XYZ is revoked and that's a big problem because he's our application XYZ guru. So as a service desk, I am going to distribute a bunch of different work to different teams. So I'm gonna have somebody uh, go into application XYZ and see if there's been any access errors. Then somebody else is gonna call the application XYZ vendor to see if it's a licensing problem. And then somebody else is going to check the actual hardware that Able Tutor is working on. So a bit of an imaginary scenario there. Now, what our process team wants us to do is say, you're gonna put the incident on hold while everybody else goes and does their incident tasks. But what happens when those incidents task gets closed? Maybe they want us to kind of kick the incident back into an in-progress state. So you can just abstract this to say, I have something going on on a child record, and when it happens, I want the parent record to be modified in some way. Now, traditionally, this is something that you would go to business rules for, but I think that thinking of flow designer first is actually a pretty valuable exercise, and I think that for a few reasons. The first reason is that Flow Designer allows you to do stuff without code. Business rules basically always have to do code 99% of the time. So because I don't have to have code, that means I can have admins that are strong and capable, just not coders, do stuff that would traditionally be restricted from like coding and business rules. The second thing I like about Flow Designer is that it has really good error handling. So if the whole flow fails, then you can use this error handler and essentially build a whole new flow for stuff that goes wrong. This is excellent because in the case of business rules, half the time you can't even detect that something has gone wrong. And by the time you know it's gone wrong, then you have to do stuff like put in log statements and go back through the syslogs. It can be pretty messy. With Air Handler, I can do a whole bunch of different stuff, whatever I want. Another thing that I love about Flow Designer is that, and we'll see this later on in the show, Flow Designer allows you to test the flows before you activate it. And I find this is just a much better way to figure out if the thing works as intended. Much easier than say business rules, which would have you essentially roll back through the entire process to get to the point at which the business rule would even trigger. So let's uh, just a quick rehash of the problem. We have incidents and whatever state they're in, uh, if one of their child tasks, incident tasks gets closed, then we want the incident to be put into a state of in progress. Let's go to the flow designer. So here we are in the flow designer and always with the flow designer, first thing you need is a trigger. So let's go add trigger and we are going to use the updated trigger, not created or updated because for these incident tasks to be closed, they would have had to already been uh, created. So we just interested in updated. And what table are we working off of? We are working off of incident task. What is our trigger conditions? I am going to say when the state, now you might say is one of close, complete or uh, skipped, but I'm going to say changes to and changes to complete or changes to incomplete or changes to uh, close skipped. The other thing I'm gonna do is make sure that the run trigger is for each unique change. 
okay? So I want this to happen. Like I could be in a world where incident tasks get closed and reopened and closed again. And I wanna be able to cover that base. I want this flow to happen in any time that a single incident task is changed to close complete or any of the other closed values. So our trigger looks about right. I'm gonna click done. And now it's time to do a flow action. It's gonna be a pretty simple one. All we wanna do is update the parent of that incident task. So let's go to add action flow logic or subflow. We are going to add an action and we are going to update a record. There's our update record. Now this is what I love about Flow Designer because there's all kinds of things to make your life easier. If I was coding this, I'd have to do like glide record and figure out what the thing's parent is and do a get. Here in Flow Designer, I can just say, listen, I wanna go to the incident task record, which we know from the trigger, and I wanna go grab its incident. And I'm just gonna drag that into the record uh, finder. There. Now it already knows that the table that you're looking at is the incident, and now we want to know what fields to update. So I'm going to pick the state field, and let's put a state of in progress. And because we're going to be a little bit fancy, let's assume that in most cases, the incident task is going to close with some work notes. We want to make those traverse up to the incident so that our incident manager doesn't have to go dumpster diving through the incident tasks to find out valuable information. So let's add a uh, field value and let's dump a whole bunch of stuff into the work notes. So let's go to the work notes and let's start building out here. So we are going to say last, um, no, let's go incident and then let's grab the number of the task, incident task, and let's grab the trigger record, incident task record number, there we go. And let's say has been closed by, who would it have been closed by? Probably the person who last updated the record. So let's go to the incident task record and let's go to the updated by. And let's put a couple character turns in here and let's say the last work note is the work notes from the incident task record. So let's grab work notes, put that there. And maybe also I want a closure code if it's got one. I don't even know if incident task has a closure code, to be truth. Closure code. And let's go through the incident. Close notes. Excellent. So not only will we change the state of the incident to in progress, but we'll also leave a nice, healthy breadcrumb trail of exactly what happened in the incident work notes so that the incident manager knows exactly what's going on. All right, so that looks about ready for update incident record. Let's hit done. And again, let's take advantage of this error handler. So let's add an action or flow logic or subflow. Now, in most of the examples I've seen on docs, it, they just use the log action, which is fine, but I'm gonna pretend that this flow is super important to me, and it's not enough that I have to go dumpster diving through log files. I don't even know if it's dropped to the log file. I wanna be informed that something is gone wrong. And what better way to be informed than with an incident? So let's go to action, let's create an incident, and remember that this is only gonna happen if the flow fails. All right, there's a huge wait there, so sorry about the pause. So uh, we've got the create task action in our air handler, and what type of task are we gonna create? We are going to create an incident, and we are going to add a uh, value, so uh, we wanna make sure this goes to the ServiceNow admin team right away, so let's go assignment group is ServiceNow. And then let's also put in a nice short description. So add a short description, help if I can spell. All right, and let's say, um, let's copy this flow title, and let's say flow has failed, okay? And let's say on incident, and let's go grab the incident number for the incident where this flow has failed. So uh, we, know we, we know the incident from this update record uh, action that we had earlier, so let's grab the incident record and grab its number. Okay, and it would probably help if we have a nice description in there too. So let's add a description. And let's put in some rich information here as well. And say, let's grab that incident number thing again. So let's incident record number. 
Uh, and let's put a short description in there too. Incident record short description. Okay, now error handler also gives us some error statusing information that we can access. So let's go code and go through our error status and grab the code object, put it there, and then put and then put message and grab the error status message. All right, let's hit done there. So now we have a very simple flow, but it's got the right trigger. So when the um, incident task state changes to any of these, and it's for any unique change, so it's not just measuring this once and then never doing it again for that incident task. Then we update the record, we change the state, and then we dump a bunch of information into the work notes. And then if the whole thing just goes kibosh on us, then it will create an incident and uh, send it to the ServiceNow admin team. Now, the last thing that I love about Flow in, in, in place of business rules is because I can test this super, super easily, and that's what we're gonna do. So let's grab uh, an incident task from this sample incident. Let's go to our flow designer and let's say test. And let's grab that task number and let's run the test. All right, test is finished, let's go view it. Okay, and we see that the incident, it simulated the incident task being updated and it's done the update record. So we see that, so we didn't have a closure code or a work note on that incident task, but if we did, it would have been put right there. We also see the incident task. This has been closed by RD Fedori. Excellent work. Okay, let's try it again, but let's force a failure. So what I've done is I've gone to incident task prior to my recording this episode. And in my incident task list, I have this incident task that has no incident parent. So this should cause the flow to fail because it has no incident to drop information into. So let's retest this, except we're gonna do our parentless incident task. And let's run the test. Let's look at the results. Okay, there was an error caught because it was trying to update the record, but of course there was no record to update. And so it's gone to the error handler and completed that. So let's see, see what incident that came up with. Okay, so it's created an incident. Let's go take a peek at it. Incident closure has failed on incident. Awesome, let's open the record. I don't have description on this form, so let's just go to the show XML. By the way, if you don't know about show XML, there's gonna be a video uh, pop up here on my YouTube channel right about here, and that will give you a video on what, X what show XML is all about. It's an awesome administrative tool, you should totally check it out. Let's find the description, and we see, okay, code, message, field, record, value, null, glide record is invalid. Awesome. So now you've seen how you can use Flow Designer in place of business rules. It's not a 100% solution. You can't completely replace business rules of Flow Designer, but it's always a good exercise to start with Flow Designer. If you like this new format, be sure to drop a like on the video. Be sure to hit that subscribe button. Uh, if you disagree with anything that I've said in this video, please leave a comment and we will see you on the next one. If you're a ServiceNow expert looking for better opportunities, but maybe your resume or LinkedIn profile isn't doing you justice, reach out to me via LinkedIn or the email pictured here as I offer both career coaching and recruitment services. And if you're a ServiceNow customer or partner, you heard that right. Robert Fedoric now does ServiceNow recruiting. With a 1,500 subscriber YouTube channel and mailing list and thousands of LinkedIn followers, let's make sure your open positions get first go at the prodigious pool of ServiceNow resources. Reach out via the email picture here.